Hey folks, Ariel over here with a, another project that we got done last fall. On a weekend day, Clay, mostly with me assisting, got a gate built to go with our new fence. Because of course, if you want a fence to work, you have to be able to get in and out of it and have a way to close that opening. So, smoothed a little gravel across the two sides of the bridge here to be sure nothing got muddy or um, lumpy driving onto and off of the ridge edges, and then used some scrap materials he'd saved from other projects to set some gate posts. So they, of course, if you want to swing a big gate on something, it needs to have some stability to it. So that process looked like this. Digging out the uh, holes to set the posts in, and then carefully placing each of those posts on both sides and uh, making sure they were level, um, you know, straight up and down and so on. And so <clears throat> that was the, the start of getting a, a firm side for each end of the gate. And you'll see here in a minute, these posts are set pretty deep. He's got them about four feet in the ground. So it should be fairly hard, even with a gate prying on them, for them to start tipping over with a post that diameter doubled up, braced with a second post, and both of them sunk four feet in. the posts were actually set in place and straight and you know, then we could backfill all the soil and get it you know watered in because as you can see it, this time of year it was pretty dusty and dry so we wanted to make sure it got packed in well and was going to you know hold and the, the first time it rained something wasn't going to start tipping sideways one direction or another so that is how the posts got set you know let the water kind of settle fill in some more soil, let the water settle again, and keep packing it in like that till there is no way that those posts could move pretty much at all. getting those all set nice and sturdy and then he got his big monster drill out to make holes to set the actual you know gate hinges into and it, they went through you know the hinge side goes through a couple posts there that are right beside each other so that it is super sturdy
got to make sure that the you know holes are the exactly right distance from each other for the way the gate is actually set so that's what we've got going on here making sure that the holes are spaced correctly precisely to set that gate into And then because you need to get uh, the nuts onto the back of those bolts that hold the gate, you had to make a little tiny gap in there to have room to be able to, you know, get a wrench on and turn those nuts nice and snug. So now I get to do a little bit of chainsaw carving to make that happen. And then we can actually set the new gate right into its home. So carry it over here and get the ends to just slide right into those bolt holes and tighten them up. And you can see my end there, I'm setting up on a block to keep the whole thing level because you don't want it to sag and rest on the ground itself. And that is a tempor temporary block as we got it you know, set up here and got those giant bolts snugged up, but we actually made a permanent block as well as you'll see a little bit later because over time any gate that is just hanging from its hinges, kind of no matter how solid the post is, you can probably see this as you drive around and look at some, you know, farm gates in fields, if the other end is not resting on something and is prying on the main post 24 hours a day, it will eventually bend the gate pull the post sideways, or both. So you can see when we got the finished product here in a minute, there's a little permanent block bolted to that free swinging end. So when you swing the gate closed, you lift it a tiny hair so it rests on that block and then is sitting level instead of prying on the hinges the whole time. And you'll see here in a minute, this gate started out red since that was the only color we could find in the correct size available in our local area at that time of year, but neither of us wanted a red gate. So shortly after we got this finished, I used a couple cans of spray paint and turned it into a black gate, which blended much more nicely into the surroundings where we wanted it. And if we could have just bought a black coated one to start with, we would have, but there was none available and we wanted to get a gate in. So it started red and turned black. Got those bolts all tight again you can see the temporary blocking is holding the post and then there is the permanent block that is actually bolted to that post that it rests on any time it goes closed and then clay you know use some other old scrap wood to kind of close the gaps between those posts and make it just look like a nice neat tidy entry and so now we have a beautiful gate into our fence one more project I'm thankful we got checked off late last fall on one of his weekend days and ready to be all good to go this spring. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.